Thanks for joining us for the Executive Series. Today I'm speaking with Bernard Rowe, who is the Managing Director of Global Geosciences. Bernard, good to talk to you. Thank you, Tom. Now, uh, your organisation has got interest in a number of uh, metals, uh, copper, gold, silver, um, but it's really the focus on lithium at the moment and boron that you're um, paying greater attention to. Yes, that's right, Tom. So historically, our company was an explorer for copper and gold, uh, particularly in the United States. Uh, but really, we're divesting those projects and sole focus going forward is on the lithium and the boron uh, project, Rhyolite Ridge in Nevada. Okay, so you're in the southern part of Nevada. Now, uh, where are you in terms of developing this resource? Because the, the big debate at the moment in, in lithium in particular is there's a, a bit of a, a, a race to get production online to capitalise on the prices at the moment. Where are you in that arc? Okay, so we are getting very close to completing our pre-feasibility study that will be completed and announced this quarter. Uh, in terms of the pathway to production, we, we're looking at finishing everything we need to do, permitting and, and, uh, and feasibility, full feasibility study by late uh, 2019 and then making an investment or construction decision around that time. We would be looking at probably 12 to 18 months construction time, so somewhere around early to the middle of 2021 is what we're aiming for, for a first production of, of lithium and, and in our case boron as well. So you've got a greenfield situation there where basically you've got no infrastructure um, and it's a matter of starting from scratch. It, it is, yes that's correct, it is a greenfields project but given that it's in Nevada it's very well serviced by existing infrastructure so we have uh, grid power only uh, about 15 kilometres away. Which makes a big difference, doesn't it? Oh, it does indeed, yes. It's not like we're developing a mine in a very remote part of the world with high costs. This is a developed uh, and very mining friendly jurisdiction in Nevada. So there's nearby mines, the roads, sealed roads are within 15, 20 kilometres. There's existing roads through to the project. Uh, there's water ne available nearby, which we've already secured some of that water. Uh, uh, and there's other infrastructure that's you know close by um, uh, towns of Tonopah, uh, there's an existing uh, mine of lithium Silver Peak uh, owned by Albemarle that's only 15 kilometres away. So it's in a very well developed from an infrastructure point of view, existing infrastructure point of view. And another point that distinguishes you from other producers in particular is the exposure to, to boron as well. Um, tell us why, why that's important. Yeah, that's a very... Or valuable at least. Yeah, that's a very important part of this project and in fact about 40% of the revenue that it'll generate actually comes from boron. So it's not a byproduct, it's a co-product with lithium. Now, lithium deposits are, are fairly rare, although everybody knows that lithium itself as, a, as a, an element is relatively common around the world. But there's not really that many lithium producing areas in the world, Australia and, and Chile, Argentina are the dominant producers. But if you look at boron, it's even rarer. So really there's only two producers of boron in the world and that's major producers and that's Rio Tinto in California and the Turkish government. Uh, so, uh, and yet the boron market is about the same size currently as the lithium market. So it's a, it's a $3 billion global business. Uh, but there's just a very, very few boron deposits in the world of any size. And here at Rhyolite Ridge, we've actually got lithium and boron mineralisation together. These are not two separate deposits, they occur together and so when we mine the rock, we are actually extracting both at the same time through a very, or through the same process. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you next. Well, is that process in terms of uh, isolating the boron, is that a complicated one or is it uh, a relatively low cost one? No, it's not complicated at all and in fact it uses exactly the same uh, processing techniques that are used in the existing boron mines of the world. So uh, we, we leach the boron out of the rock using sulfuric acid and once the boron has been leached out of the rock, which is a very simple process, we then extract it from the leach solution by a process called uh, crystallisation. Uh, and that's a very well known, well understood process. So the production of boric acid uh, which would be the end product that we would make on site is actually a very well known and understood process. So in terms of like the commercial aspect of things, uh, how does the boron um, stack up in the, in the general investment uh, thesis? Is that what really um, gets lenders over the line when they hear, oh wow, this is like a, an important market that uh, will be well served by this resource? Uh, I think it definitely differentiates us from 
other lithium uh, deposits or up, up and coming lithium producers having the boron aspect to our project and, and clearly we are seeing a lot of interest uh, from both avenues of lithium and boron. The, um, I think the, the reality is that the boron market is not very well understood be, by the general public because there are very few players in it but what we're seeing is that there's limited or uh, limited future supply and yet we're seeing healthy uh, growth in demand particularly from Asia and so you know a large deposit of lithium plus boron uh, located in the west coast of the US is a very very valuable asset in terms of uh, proximity to a very strong and growing market and yeah the, the boron I guess is perhaps not quite the high profile that lithium is seeing at the moment but clearly it's, a, it's an integral uh, commodity for urbanisation, energy conservation and uh, economic growth. And if you were to um, put it in terms of m mine life, um, how many years have you got in relation to uh, boron and lithium? So but at the moment we've drilled a resource, that so it's all drilled out, um, well understood, and the lithium boron component of that resource is about 90 to 100 million tonnes. So that's sufficient for about 30 years of production uh, at the sort of rates we're contemplating. And But importantly, it's still open. So we will drill more uh, holes and we will, I'm sure, find additional tonnes. So that, will, I would strongly uh, suggest, will uh, uh, expand from 30 years. Okay. So you've recently had a capital raising as well. Um, mm. How are you deploying those funds now? Yeah, that's right. So we recently raised uh, an additional $50 million. So the company's very well strongly financed at the moment with uh, $80 million in the bank. Uh, that's really going to see us all the way through to that decision to commence construction that I mentioned earlier, which would be late next year. Uh, so those funds will ensure that we uh, uh, complete the pre-feasibility that I've mentioned that's just about to come out in the next month or two. Uh, move straight into a bankable feasibility study stage. We'll be developing a pilot plant, like a small scale plant, to produce lithium and boron samples for potential customers. Uh, we'll also be doing all the environmental permitting that's required. That's a process that's well underway. Uh, and as we move towards that construction decision, we're, with the funding in place, we're planning on also uh, ordering some of the long lead time items earlier than we might have otherwise been able to do so that we can fast track that uh, from decision to construct through to first production. And from a cost perspective, given the fact that Nevada is so, such a well established um, mining jurisdiction, mm. uh, how uh, the, the access to, to mining services would be uh, quite ample? Yes, uh, indeed, there's a very mature mining scene in, in, uh, in Nevada, or in the US generally, but particularly Nevada. Nevada produces, I think, about 80% of the US's gold production, and, and the US is in the top five, top five gold producers in the world. So, yeah, there's a very large pool of uh, expertise and talent in, you know, for the mining industry, so we don't see any issues there, and we think that that will equate to you know, very low costs compared to many operating a mine in, me, very, in many other parts of the world. You mentioned the pilot facility. Uh, mm. When do you uh, expect that you'll be getting uh, product out of that? Uh, we plan Once the pre-feasibility is finished, then that's sort of one of the next things on the agenda is the pilot plant combined with the commencement of the bankable feasibility study. So we've already started doing on a small scale uh, production of end product. Uh, so we expect uh, between now and the end of the year we'll sort of ramp up the, the, the capacity of that so that we can produce larger quantity samples. But that, that's a sort of, a, I guess, an ongoing process. Well, great to talk to you about the project. Thanks for your time. Uh, no problems at all, Tom. Pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for joining us for the Executive Series.